everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Imaginary Boys. I am one of the two hosts, Mr. Habanero, and I have my other amazing, badass, super sexy, absolutely adorable, and apparently slightly salty tasting, Mr. Lettuce. He is my other host. How are you doing, Mr. Lettuce? I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> I actually I actually heard that, like, I love that jingle. Um, it's uh, like, oh, God, I actually have it saved in... Um, one of my one of my things here let me find it it cracks me up every time i hear it it's um still a piece of garbage i know yep. which one you're talking about yeah uh the, yeah that that guy who that the, the, the guy who that jingles from that no one credits it from mm-hmm. he also has uh two really good videos if you if you're feeling like a youtube rabbit hole called the history of the world and mm-hmm. the history of japan yeah here it is here it is wait i'm gonna here it is Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> Did you hear that? No, no. Because, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because the uh, podcasting software yeah. isn't recording your desktop audio. It's recording your, micro- your microphone source. You're absolutely right. I know that the uh, the viewers will, will hear it, though. Oh, yeah. No, no. You probably injected in, into the thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's something you can do you know yeah post that's so funny I, I like okay so what were you telling me about the guy who recorded that because i i actually don't know him uh he has a couple youtube videos the two that he's really known for are the history of the world and the history of japan okay are they like um like like satire like videos no, I no, no 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 they're they're actually really good videos but he does it in kind of the a uh, a melodic. His name is Bill Wirtz. Okay. And he does it in kind of that a melodic style. Okay. All right. Um. So it's 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 pretty cool. <laughs> I will I will throw you a link so you can watch it later. Yeah, I will definitely check it out. If you recommend it, I will I will definitely check it out. So, um, cause that's only, cause that's only going to bite you like one out of five times. Okay. I'm done. I'm trusting, trusting random links. I said now that, that only bites you in the ass like, like twice. I don't think I'm trying to think of like the worst thing you've sent to me. I've yet probably to say, I, you sent I've me yet, your basketball and I didn't like that. <laughs> well, that was just a picture. You had no choice but to open that one. <laughs> and you asked for, you literally asked for it. I yeah. Really because. Came, because I'll sarcasm maintain. and jokes don't exist on this podcast. <laughs> oh, come on. How how long have you known me? <laughs> this is apparently way too long, dude. Way too how, long. How often, how often have you known me to back down from a mother challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did make the 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 legendary uh the goatsy hatcher picture, so I should I should know better. I should Yeah, yeah, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I think he did know better. He just wanted to see my balls, dude. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Well, wanted, why else would I ask you for them, you right? Wanted, you wanted to see them. So you yeah. could. I, I thought you were just going to share them with the audience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, because, you know, that won't get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely wouldn't get me in trouble at all. Well, you were pro- you were promising my my balls to to your listeners. <laughs> Nobody's seen that picture other than me and whoever else you decided to share it with. My girlfriend. She thought it was funny. Oh, of course she. I mean, I'll I'll be honest. I thought it was funny too. But I mean, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> the best part of waking up is my balls up in your cup. <laughs> oh, How's your coffee, by the way, man? It's delicious. Do you hear me slurping it? Yeah, no. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Ah, so good. So good. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, God, there was something I there was something I wanted to, like, bring up. And then I totally all of a sudden slipped my mind. I mean, I do. I do know that we do have some very entertaining things to to get into. Uh, and oh, talk we have plenty about. of time. We have plenty of time to get to those. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I I have been. You were asking me about what I've been up to, and I've been playing a lot of Inscription. 
I've been playing um, some, I've been back into Minecraft pretty hardcore. I've been doing a ton of builds and stuff like that. So that's been a lot of fun. And um, man, got, like, dude, have you watched any? It's okay if you haven't. I won't get mad. I swear I won't get mad. Um, have you watched any of the videos that I've done for Inscription? You've gotten watch time for me. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I trust that. I, I may have not been paying that much attention to it. That's okay. Because I'm also working. As long as, like, you've seen some of the gameplay... Like, I got to ask, what do you think of, like, the game? Like, do you think it would be a game you would get into? Not really. Really? That kind of surprises me. What is it like? What about it? Do you like? Are you not particularly interested in? It just again, it was one of those pacing things. Like, Mm. I'm I've been kind of in a. I mean, outside of outside of uh, doing Animal Crossing stuff. Right. I've gotten back into that game uh, mostly to help my kid back out. Yeah, uh, I've been, but I've been liking a little bit more action in my stuff. Okay, all right. Like, like more. It, it's like I, I just I love the card game design of Inscription. I think it's so well done. Like, I, I'm, I'm. It's like. Like, I, I basically, like, I'm just going to go ahead and and because I've been talking to people about it. Like, I've mostly been harassing uh, Cinder Shadow about this a lot. Um, I basically don't like magic at all anymore. And, P- and you know, it's it's like, you know, Cinder Shadow would be like, oh, well, what you really mean is you don't like arena. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I don't like arena, but I also don't like magic. And he's like, oh, wait, what you actually mean is you don't like Wizards of the Coast. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I don't like. I don't game, like magic. <laughs> the game the game has very, very, very visibly changed in the past six years. Yeah. So like the thing is, is, is that like my my overall view of magic at this point, because I mean, if you asked me like maybe about a year or two ago, I would have been like, oh, yeah, I just hate Wizards of the Coast or I just hate Arena. Like, but magic is still fine. I no, don't think magic is fun anymore at all. No, it's 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 very not. It's yeah. Um, and I'm I've actually like you know gotten to the point of where it's like I genuinely fire has, huh fire has has ruined has the 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 fire thing that they do yeah the that the design element to where like we need things to be big we need them th- these things to be flashy which granted they kind of had to do if they wanted to you know make magic an e a viable esport. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah. big, splashy things. Sure. Make it look really cool for the, the problem is, is like, uh, it's a really bad balancing act. Yeah. Or it's a really hard balancing act that Wizards has obviously decided not to do. Yeah. Well, the thing for me now is, like, because I'm basically at this point in the mindset that magic is is a garbage game. And the thing is, too, on top of that, is that it it's a garbage game because it's a reflection like because people would be like, oh, you know, like hate the company, not the game. Right. But it's like, but the game is a reflection of the company. It's a reflection of like the decisions they make, you know, like like you said, like fire. Right. Like they have a very particular way of doing things and they have a very particular mindset. And like, obviously that's changed from how they were in the past. So like everything that they put into the game now is a reflection of like their mentality, like at the time that they are designing for the game. So it's like the reason why magic is a garbage game is because it's a reflection of a garbage company. So like, I genuinely don't think the game is fun anymore. I don't even want to play it. Like I have like, I mean, I I still have all my old cards, but I mean, I have not touched my cards in months. Um, I'm not interested in really playing the game at all. But overall, like my whole premise of this is I, besides the fact that I do genuinely, like I don't want anything to do with magic anymore, but I've been looking for like a game that kind of, facilitates that you know wanting to play like a a strategy card game but i didn't want to like go out and buy like you know for example like one of the things that mike hatcher um says 
is one of the main reasons why he doesn't want to play any new card games is because then he has to worry about going out and buying like hundreds of thousands of cards just to get into a new game, right? And then having the, that game just like die, like yeah, like predictably finding a finding a game of that, finding someone to play that game with. Yeah, exactly. And like, or how many games? Just, like how many games has he gone through? Where he's like, yeah, this game's great, and then it, it just kind of just stops fizzle. talking about them. Yeah, they just because, fizzle out of existence because. You need somebody to play the game with like great games. Do you still need people to play it? Exactly. Exactly. So like I've been looking for something that, you know, can facilitate that wanting to play a strategic card game, but also doesn't require this deep, deep, you know, monetary um, commitment as well as doesn't require, you know, tons of people like you know having a schedule arranged with people to be able to even play and enjoy the game and playing this game inscription is like the first time i've played a digital card game that is just i am just having the absolute most fun time ever like and it's not even about card collecting or anything because i mean i feel like there is a point you get into it where which i haven't gotten to yet uh where you might actually end up collecting cards um, but I haven't done that yet, but just playing the game, learning the strategies, like learning about the mechanics, fighting the bosses, you know, exploring the game and, and the deck design. And it's so fun. It's like tapping back into, you know, the, the sort of like stuff that I miss from, you know, the old days of like playing magic, the gathering, you know, where it's, you know, deck building and, and creative strategies and all that stuff. So I've been way into it. Um, I actually had to stop uh, playing it, which is actually really hard because <laughs> I love it so much. Um, because I, I got to a, a point in uh, my, you know, content creation where it's like, OK, well, I, I have to slow down on this game. Um but it's so good, dude. It's so it's so fun. I've been like, I don't know. I've been having a great time with it. It feels like it's well worth the price. And I actually kind of hope that it's not a one and done kind of game. Like I was actually thinking about it the other day um, where I was like, oh, it'd be so cool if they came out with like, you know, additional expansions to either like, you know, enhance the story or, you know, add more cards or um, I still get the impression, though, too, that there's also a card creation mechanic in the game that I haven't seen yet. So maybe they wouldn't actually want to add more cards or anything because it it's already like you could just do it yourself. Um, but yeah, my point is, is I've been playing Inscription. It's amazing. Um, I think that if anybody here is a strategic card gamer, like, for example, any magic players that happen to uh, listen to this. Um, play Inscription if you haven't already played it. It's freaking amazing. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, Magic is a garbage game. Don't play it. And uh, Wizards of the Coast is a garbage company. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, like I, I saw you play it, and outside of the atmosphere, which I could see, which I know, like the atmosphere does a lot for you. Mm-hmm. The horror, um, the horror it, stuff. It, it feels the game. The gameplay felt a lot like almost every other. Like it, there was a genre of like the like the digital card game mm-hmm. thing where you got like the lane, like the the lane battle system. Okay. And I've played a lot of those, and I just I don't ever really have a lot of fun with them. Okay, that's all right, man. Yeah, I've heard some people tell me, oh, this is just um, Slay the Spire. And I'm like, well, I I mean, so I haven't played Slay the Spire. A little but bit. I, I, you, you're saying you've played it a little bit? Um, yeah. I have not played Slay the Spire, but I've watched people play Slay the Spire. I've actually watched uh, multiple different content creators uh, play Slay the Spire. And every time I watch people play it, I don't it it it's never felt like something that I've wanted to play. 
Like it just it doesn't give me the same feeling as um you know playing uh playing inscription. So and I mean I've I've like I said, like, you know, shout out to Cinder Shadow and and you know um the other people that I've seen play it. Um Cinder Shadow would just tell me over and over again, oh, it's just like inscriptions just slay the spire. And like I like I hear him say that and I'm like you know, and I, I don't say this to him, but um, I've thought it multiple times. It's like, dude, I've watched you play Slay the Spire and it does not feel like playing Slay the Spire at all. Like it, it I mean, I wouldn't know because I haven't played it, but I mean, from what I've seen, um, because in Slay the Spire, it's like you you control a character and then all your cards are like actions that your character does, you know? But like Inscription is like you know, you have creatures and they have different abilities and they do different things and you have to like sacrifice things to like bring them out. And it's not just one character. Like you're like, it's, I would say inscriptions a lot more like magic than it is like inscription. I mean, than it is like uh, slay the spire, excuse my words. Um, So I don't know. I just think it's awesome. I'm really into it and uh, been having a good time playing it. It's been some frustrating moments, too, but that's only because uh, fun fact, uh, I'm terrible at video games. I'm like the worst video game player ever. So, no, not you. <laughs> Shut up. Be good, scrub. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible actually the game. The game that I, I say it kind of feels um, more like mm-hmm. uh, there's a game that Richard Garfield made. OK, with, uh, with some of the people who also made um, Ascension. Have you ever um, played Ascension? I, I don't know that game, actually. Uh, it's called Soulforge, and it's another one of those kind of like lane combat type card game systems. OK, OK. I don't even I don't even know if Soulforge is still live. Mm-hmm. Any like if the servers are up or anything. Yeah, I've never heard of it. It's been a while. Mm. Is it is it like the same kind of thing where it's like you, you know, build a deck? Because like the thing is, is one of the things that I like about Inscription 2 is that it's it's a uh, like I think it's called like a uh, it's built in the style of, I believe, a living card game where you have a you know, it's because it's a deck building game. So like the idea is that like you don't get to like build your perfect deck based on having all the cards all at once. You kind of gain cards at over time as you go. And then you kind of like trim the deck and build it to the best of its abilities based on the cards that you receive over time. So it's like, you know, part of the progression of the game is acquiring cards and then, you know, building it as you go. So, um, yeah, it's I, I really like that aspect of it because it's like because overall, like it's like a first of all, it's like a board game. Like it has some dungeons and oh, dragons. Yeah, no, Soulforge, to it. Soulforge is deader than dead. Uh, they've delisted it on Steam. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. Um, was it a good game? Like, did you actually find no, it? No, 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 no. It's no. not a good game. No, okay. No, it's <laughs> it had pretty art, uh, but the lane com the the lane combat system was kind of goofy. It wasn't. It was balanced um, worse than the versus system mm-hmm. at the end of it. Okay, uh, I can see why it didn't last more than two years. Interesting. But it, it's at one point you were you were playing it and you were into. Oh, it. I was. I actually kickstarted that game. Oh, interesting. So it's it looked those, good at the time when you were when you were trying to. Well, I mean, uh, help he, them out. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Well, um, yeah. Another other than inscription, which, like I said, I I adore. Um, and it's it, it's weird because, like, you know, I've been and I do have to say, like, I really have to kind of like you know, double down on, on how much I've been enjoying this game. So like a lot of the time when I play games on steam, you know, when I try random new games that I've never tried before, you know, a lot of the games that I play, I'll play them on stream or I'll, I'll do a video for them or whatever. 
And like, by the time I'm done with it, it's like, oh, like you've clocked in two hours of this game or you've clocked in like four hours of this game, you know, but like then there are games that like I absolutely love and adore where it's like, you know, like, for example, like, you know, you play Skyrim and it's like, oh, you've got like 150 hours in this game, you know, like so. And and those are few and far between. Like there's maybe like two, maybe three games on my on my Steam list where it's like I've clocked in that many hours because they're so good. A lot of them are just like one and dones, you know, play it for a few hours and then that's all I ever see of it ever again. I've already clocked in, um, I think, like 13, maybe 14 hours on Inscription. Like, I just straight up got to a point of where I just I literally could not stop playing it. It was it's so just it's definitely a game that I feel like I can probably come back to over and over again. Yeah, so it says I've got 13.5 hours in Inscription. And um, I just I I, I mean, that's not very much, obviously, but that's because I I had to I had to stop because of the the content creation. I had to come to a stopping point. I'm like, okay, I'm now officially at a point where it's like I have to release what I've created before I can move on with the game. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I would have like probably 30 or 40 hours in the game by now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's definitely a game that feels like I will probably be coming back to it a lot. Um, I'll probably do like streams of it randomly, like in the future or something like that. So who knows? But I'm having a great time. And other than that, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. That's what I've been uh, playing obsessively for the last uh, couple of days since I can't play Inscription. Um <laughs> Because, hey, everybody, 1.18 is out, huh? Yeah, no, I've been watching uh, our, our buddy Cindy. Yeah, yeah. He's been, he's been streaming it. It looks yeah. nice. Yeah. The generation it, is cool. The new generation engine that they put in. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Uh, still not something I think I'd sink a whole lot of time into. You know, I was thinking about like there was something that I was thinking about um, related to Minecraft and your opinion on it that I remembered specifically like with last time we talked about it, you were telling me how you weren't into it. Um, and you said that one of the major turnoffs for the game was the fact that they tried to put like a story into it. Is that like or am I mis- no, no, no. You? I think you misremembering. OK, my. My uh, issue with it was it was this really cool creation tool. Yeah. Like just the and and, and you actually have creator mode. Yeah. Yes. The problem like, is, is creator mode. Creator mode is I mean, it's nice. You get to do some really nice things in creator mode, but it's also boring. Yeah, that's why like. I actually never play Minecraft in uh, creator mode. I always play it in survival mode because I like the challenge of building something grand and, and insane and crazy, but like also having to worry about like death, you know? Right. No. And and I get, and I get the survival mode thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's also like, so Survival mode adds stakes. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I guess it's just me being an epic gamer. Uh, <laughs> okay. The stakes never seemed relevant to me. Okay. Like, like you know how to circumvent the stakes. You, mm-hmm. you know, you spend a lot of, t- if you're lucky, you roll your world. Yeah. And you get dropped in a biome and you get dropped, you get dropped in a biome where, uh, you could, in theory, be starting, and or, or you can you can get yourself a reasonable starting base mm-hmm. without having to travel too far. Sure, sure. Like you know, ba- the basic you know, build a house and and don't die. Yeah, yeah, build build a build a shelter. Get yourself a bed. Uh, get yourself some torches, and just don't die for the first few nights. Right. The only challenge seems to come is when you get dropped in the bad biome. Okay. The problem the problem is is if you get dropped in the bad biome, you got two choices. You can respawn until you get the good biome, 
or you can just pick a direction and start walking. Yeah, and almost almost every every time I've ever started in a bad biome, I just like choose a direction and I just go, you know. Right. Right. So if you are if you decide if you decide, you know, the typical plan, which I call plan B, uh, you know, y- you are at a considerable amount of risk because s- the survival mode doesn't realize that you got dropped in the bad starting area. Okay. Unlike unlike in civilization. So I like in so you I, I don't know if you've ever played civilization. Um I've I've played it a little bit in the past. I was never super into it, but my friends okay. and my sister was really into the civilization games. Okay, so the key to to winning games of multiplayer civilization has very little to do with your strategy after the first 100 turns. Okay. It is all about what the little piece, the little chunk of the, of the map that you have to yourself gives available to you as your starting area. Mm-hmm. Civil, civilization is all about starting area mechanic. Okay. Um... It's why you don't see a lot of competitive, like, um, let's, I mean, outside of the genre, never, never really allowing for that. It's why you don't hear of, like, large civilization turn- tournaments. Because anybody who plays multiplayer civilization knows that 75%, 75% of your ability to win the game is randomly determined at the start. I was about to say, it sounds like it's a large portion of the game is based on luck. Yeah, 70, 75% of your ability to win the game is flat out determined randomly at the start of the game. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> right. That's survival mode in Minecraft. Uh, but the thing if is, you, is, if you get if you get an unusable biome, if, if you get dropped in an unusable biome, you are walking and you hope that you don't come across some, anything too gnarly mm-hmm. that, you know, impedes your ability to get to a good starting biome. Well, it's it's just that, like, because, I mean, I've, or, I've or started. Or you can just do what I do. Or you can just do what I do and just respawn. Okay. And, and then, like, if you get a good starter, if you get a good starting thing, then, you know, build your thing. But then at that point, you have stakes, but... After you establish yourself, the only real danger is when you need to progress further than what your starting biome will allow you to. Mm-hmm. But usually, you you're good. You're allowed. You give yourself a good enough advantage to where you, when you have to seek out other resources, you're prepared to do so quite well. Well, it's it's just that like so. A lot of the time, no matter where, what, you know, where I start in Minecraft, like no matter where the spawn location is, I usually never build in the spawning area of Minecraft. I almost always travel far away, even if like the biome that I'm spawned in is a good biome. How do you define travel far? Well, I mean, well, I mean, like... There have been times it just it just kind of depends. Like sometimes I have to travel really far because like I've spawned in a desert before and that sucks, you know, like a gigantic desert. That's happened to me before. Um, But sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, I spawned in, you know, like a not so great biome and maybe just kind of going west a little bit, you know, will take me to like a forest or something. So like the, the thing is, is that like you can like unlike what you explained in civilization which sounds like like from the very beginning like this is the hand you've been dealt and good luck like that's that and that's all you get but like in minecraft like if you start somewhere shitty like you can make the choice to like go somewhere else and and you know do yeah, but, better somewhere else you know yeah but then you're spending the first 4 days wa- for for the first 4 day night cycles walking um and that's, I mean, that's, that's really not fun. Well, I mean, you can like, I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, I mean, because like, no, no, it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way, but it can be. 
I, I mean, I, I just, you know, like a lot. <sighs> Minecraft is very malleable to your own choices. So, like, I mean, I think that it's it's not like I don't think that. You know, like, I mean, I, I can definitely see how sometimes that would happen, but I mean, you know, like one of the things that Minecraft is all about is exploring a lot, too. So, like, I mean, yeah, sometimes you are going to run into like a thing where you're going to have to be running around for a little while to get something that's worth building into. But I mean, you know, you're probably also in the process of like, maybe you dug underground a few times to like, you know, get away from, you know, the nights and you happen to come across some good resources like you acquire iron and redstone and lapis or whatever and coal and all that stuff. So like even in the process of having to like run in a particular direction for a few days, you've still accomplished some things like, you know, you've you've even if you're like stuck in the middle of a desert, there's still like it's like, well, it's not going to be a desert underground. Like, I mean, obviously, you're not going to have you know, wood growing under the earth, but, you know, you still have access to all sorts of stone blocks. I mean, there's still a tons of other resources underneath the ground that you can acquire. You could build a house out of stone, like cobblestone to like survive for a while if you had to, which I've had to do before where it's like, I, I just, you know, I'm running through a huge area that is, you know, doesn't have any wood. Like I said, like a big old desert biome or something. And I just kind of like have to like accept the fact that I'm going to have to build some like shitty cobblestone huts every once in a while. And like there's no sheep in sight. Like I remember in the the previous multiplayer server, I made the choice to go and live in a Mesa Badlands biome. And there were a few things that I had to overcome when I made that choice. Mesa Badlands biomes are very, very difficult to start in. And I made the choice like that wasn't where I actually spawned into, but I made the choice to start there. So like one of the things I had to overcome was the fact that I didn't have access to cows. I didn't have access to sheep. And one of my most valuable resources was dirt. Like no joke. Like I there was a large period of time when I was playing in that in that biome where dirt was this extremely valuable resource it was very difficult to acquire and um so i mean i i had to like collect every piece of dirt that i could possibly find in the area and uh it was really important that i held on to it at any opportunity that i had and used it very wisely so i mean you know but that was because i made the choice to you know play in a biome that was definitely more difficult so, I mean, sometimes like and like I said, like I didn't have and I just started out, so I didn't really have access to many resources in the first place. So um, I, I just think that like it's and I mean, you even said earlier that like, you know, in the worst possible case scenario, you might just like respawn into a new oh, yeah, I'll just or whatever. I'll just I'll just reseed. Yeah. After, so after if if. If I'm into the second night cycle and I'm not like, if I don't feel comfortable with what I have on hand, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to reseed. All right. Well, it's just, um, I, I mean, I guess maybe me personally, like I just don't have a problem with running around for a few night nights and days before I'm comfortable with what I get, you know, because like I kind of. I, I like it. I like the exploration. I like seeing the different stuff. And uh, yeah, I like the building, and I like the I like the feeling like I progressed. Because because one of my because my other problem with with the with the game is is still even <coughs> in survival mode where you where you have stakes. Mm -hmm. Sorta. Of. Yeah. Um. You. You know. You kind of have to build your own goals. Yeah. And I've heard people talk about, well, the end game stuff. What about the end game stuff? I'm like, I like, what's the point of the end game? Like, yeah, is, is what do you get for beating the, what do you get for beating the final boss? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is, what is the goal? So like you've, you're, you've played Minecraft. And I was like, I'm like, yeah, but I, I, I believe like, I get most of what Minecraft offers 
By somewhere's just, in the middle. By somewhere's in the middle of the game. Yeah. So in actuality, <clears throat> it sounds like that you're a lot more like me. So like I am more, for example, like I actually still haven't beaten the end of the game because in all honesty, I don't really care. Um, like I don't have an elytra. I haven't beaten the, the, the dragon haven't really gone to the end. Um, I am an obsessive builder in Minecraft. I have to be constantly working on building something. And, um, and it's actually funny because, um, I was kind of like, um, kind of like figuring this out recently is um because like i've been my you know cinder if you're watching this uh shout out to you buddy um Cin my friend Cin cinder shadow uh our friend cinder shadow um has been having a really difficult time um staying in touch with minecraft in the sense of like um he cinder shadow is more like what you were saying that you're not a big fan of which is cinder shadow is more of the exploration guy he wants to he wants to see all the biomes. He wants to like try all the new things. He wants to beat the end of the game. He wants to collect like the the new achievements and and collect the the rare new items and and you know see all the things and explore all the stuff. Um but when it comes to building, um Cinder Shadow has a very difficult time with that. And it's 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 to a point of where um it I can tell uh, based on how he discusses it with me that um, the fact that he has such a hard time with, um, you know, being happy with the resources he's collected and being comfortable with being able to build things um, that it makes it hard for him to actually want to play the game in his free time. So, um, and he gets to a point of where, like, what you're saying, which is, you know, like, you know, you like, oh, well, have you beaten the end? And it's like, well, what's the point? Because, like, you know, I don't really care. I'm more interested in the building stuff. And then let's say you go and you beat the end, which is, you know, Cinder Shadow has beaten the end. He's gotten the rare items. He's seen all the stuff. And then he's at a point where it's like, well, what do I do now? And it's like, well, it's Minecraft. You build, right? You build. And you know, and, we and it's it. we beat the we beat we beat the guy. What do we do now? We get to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> good reference. That's a good episode of that of South Park. I love that. Now we get to play the game. Yeah, the, actually, that was the that's the World of Warcraft one, right? Yeah, that, that's the yeah. World of Warcraft. That's a good one. I love that one. Yeah. Now that we've actually defeated him, we can actually play the game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so like you do get to a point of where if you're all just obsessed with the exploration and beating the game and, and getting the the new things like you run out of stuff to do. And, you know, and, you know, he kind of has a problem with um, like he says, like, oh, well, I've got all these ideas, but I just don't have the time or the ability. And I've tried to tell him before I was like, well, just start something. Just start something and be comfortable with the fact that you can just walk away from it at any time. I do that all the time when I play Minecraft, like yeah. literally right now I'm actually doing a humongous build in my world for Minecraft. But the thing is, is like if I were to just work on it nonstop, I would probably not eat, not sleep and not work my job for like the next like two or three weeks. So, so the point is, is, yeah, that's, that's, that's danger. Yeah, exactly. But that's the point is because like, you know, he's he's told me he's like, well, I just don't have like the time and ability to like do it. And I'm like, well, you just kind of start something and you have to be comfortable with the fact that it's not going to be done like immediately. You know, you, you got to be OK with the fact that, yes, you have a life and yes, it's OK to walk away. But yeah. the fact that you know that you have to walk away doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. You know, yeah, it's okay for for your for your base to be missing some walls. Yeah, exactly. Lay your lay your foundation, put a couple walls up, then walk away. Yeah, maybe have it. Maybe maybe evolve your idea. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that's. I mean, that's just. I think that's just the way to do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and it's for Cinder. It's it's very clearly that it's it's kind of. Um, difficult for him. He has this thing where um, I don't He's, know. Ex it, there's got to be clear. Like, 
I mean, Cinder actually and I do have the 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 same hang up mm-hmm. where you got to have that clear and obvious goal. Yeah. And to him, the clear and obvious goal is the explore is the, you know, obtaining the every item mm-hmm. and seeing all the sites and doing all the things. Yeah. In a game that. While it feels like uh, exploration is a big part of it, mm-hmm. I kind of think that exploration is just kind of the thing is kind of a byproduct of the of the fact that you have a, you're basically a of of it being an electronic Lego set. I was literally just about to say. That like the fact that you brought up Legos is so first of all, I used to be obsessed with Legos when I was a kid. And I think that's also why I have such a deep attachment to Minecraft. Um, well, yeah, that's why that, that I mean, that was initially why I got into it, too, because I was like, oh, this is, you know, Legos, except for it's a whole world. Yeah. Um. What I was what I was going to say was that uh, basically, you know, when you get your Lego set as a kid, right? And you have all the pieces and you're like, all right, let's start building, right? You know, and you start like spending all your time building whatever you're building. And then you're like, ah, it's done. Now that it's done, it's like what you said with the the South Park reference. We beat the guy. Now we get to play the game, right? But like the whole thing is that like what they were doing in the game to play the game is nothing compared to the adventure they went on to defeat the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'd say that that's the same idea. Like when I used to play with Lego sets as a kid, it's like, oh, I'm building this thing and it's taking all this time. And like, it's so fun and interesting to watch the progress of me starting from the bottom and making my way to the top and building it all together and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you finally get it done and you're like, all right, well now what? Well, now I get to play with it. And then you play with it and you're like, well, you know, I, I, I built the thing and I'm playing with it and it's like, Nah, this is dumb. It's trying to time time to build the new thing, you know? Like yeah. it's and and I mean that's kind of how I feel about like Minecraft as well. Is it's like, you know, like I I build the things because I'm obsessed with the process of building. Like I like making things in Minecraft. But it's like once it's done, it's like, you know, I try to build things that are practical that I will purposely have to use a lot for whatever purpose that I need. But it's like the idea of, you know, like, oh, like I'm building this for the purpose of being able to get further to play in the game, like going exploring, beating the boss, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not so much my mindset, which is like, you know, I just want to build something. So, you know, like, I don't really care about beating the dragon. I'm not super like, for example, like I even remember like uh, I think it was Cinder. I'm pretty sure it was definitely Cinder Shadow who's like, hey, dude, like you're still building on your base. And I was like, yeah, like I'm working on a huge project. And he's like, well, don't you want to go out and like, see all the like new features that 1.18 brought. And I basically told him, I was like, well, I'll see them eventually. Like I have to, you know, like it's, it's inevitable that I'll see them, but I don't need to like go out of my way to go and see it all like immediately. Like it'll come to me at some point. Like there are things that they added that I will definitely eventually build with and I'll need to acquire, but I'm not at that point yet. I don't need those things immediately. So I'm fine right here on my little island building all the stuff that I'm building, you know? Yeah. I don't need to go out and, and you know, see all the things and do all the stuff because then you run into exactly what you're talking about, which is when you finally go out of your way to see the stuff just to, for the sake of seeing the stuff, you find it and then you're like, now what? Right? Yeah. Where's where's I guess I guess it's the next stuff to find. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I kind of like the idea of like, you know, it's like, oh, 1.18 is out. Awesome. I'm gonna stay here in my little 1.17 base and keep working on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'll I'll get there. Like I'll get to that stuff at some point. Like I have to, you know? Like I I I have to get those things at some point when I need them. Yeah, 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 no. Um, but yeah, so don't hate Minecraft. I just, I just, I, I pop in 
and mm-hmm. I, I I mess around, I build something, and then I'm not as compulsive of a builder as you, mm-hmm. which is why I just you know it'll be months in between logging in on Minecraft. Okay, that's all right. Like, I'll I'll get an itch, and I'll be like, ah, oh, let's see what this, let's see if this satisfies it, and then I'm like, a little bit. All right. Maybe and maybe he's, you'll get some new fun games to play with. Yeah, it's um, I mean, it's I'm depressed, w- however, because yeah, there's me. something I've been wanting to play and I can't. That's right. We originally this was supposed to be the the ya boy lettuce is salty episode, but we got a little distracted. Um, it's OK. So let, let's uh, let's pour out the salt, buddy. What are we? No one we wants. Salting? No one wants. No one really wants to hear an old man rant. Oh, uh, I'm I you see, this is what I was saying before we started the episode. When I get mad, it's not very fun. When when you're mad, it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm salty about. Remember when I was like, I'm gonna sell all my I'm gonna sell my PlayStation 4 and all my PlayStation 4 games. And yeah. I'm gonna and I'm gonna get a bunch of Steam credit. Sure. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. And I'm gonna <laughs> and and I'm gonna play like San and I'm gonna play San Andreas, and it's gonna be, you know, just like I remember it 19 years ago. <laughs> okay, did we did we actually talk about this on an episode already? Yeah, I don't remember like, uh, like an episode two ago. Okay, because this is some funny. Like I I love oh, the whole thing so, about so, what's going on with them. So, so the so the update to this is that the definitive version is available back on the PC again. It came back about a week ago. Oh, uh, okay. It's not on Steam. Steam Steam will not touch it. Hmm. As a matter of fact, Rockstar pulled all of their older games off of uh, Steam as well. Is it because they're getting like review bombed or something? Because usually I've seen... No, because no, cause the Rockstar launcher is a thing. Oh, of like, course the only it thing- is. The only thing Rockstar still has on Steam is like GTA 5 online. Okay. Or GTA online and and stuff like that. But a lot of their classic games that used to be on on Steam have been pulled. Right, cuz they want to do it through their own launcher. Yeah. Uh so and I think the PC version that they replaced the the trilogy with, the, the definitive edition trilogy was like a the trilogy of the games that were direct port of the uh mobile games. I didn't know that GTA had mobile games. Oh yeah, no, you can play you can play Grand Theft Auto 3, San Andreas and all that stuff on your on your iPhone. I literally yeah. had no idea that that was a thing. Yeah, no, it I mean it it, it sounds exactly it, it plays exactly like it sounds. <laughs> Like GTA three, but on a phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know that, that the, the odd screen control thing with the, I uh, hate that. I yeah, like, no, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the, the touch screen analog stick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That oh, thing. I that, hate that, that thing. Any, any mobile game that uses touch screen analogs. I just don't play it. I don't play right. them. Right. So it's a little better on the iPad. But not by much. Yeah. Only because the iPad gives you more screen real estate to 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 give you the thumb touch screen without, you know, obliterating half of your view. I I hate I I oh so yeah, much hate. So, so, so much hate for, for touch screen analog. So, so much I'm hate. not gonna be able to to enjoy the the sheer shit show <laughs> that was the Grand Theft Auto remastered edition. I mean, you're uh, probably doing and, and, yourself a favor. <laughs> well, in the method in which I wanted to enjoy it. Sure, sure. I wanted it. I wanted it on my PC. And I was going to buy it on Steam. Okay. And I was going to enjoy it. Now I can't. And I've got all the Steam. And I've got, like, all that Steam credit. Because what I did was I bought, like, a Steam gift card. Right. Did and, you do and, it? Spe- so you did it specifically... Like you did the trade ins, you got the credits specifically so that you could play the GTA games. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so so now my Steam wallet has like all this money in it, and 
<laughs> and okay. and and you know it'll it'll get spent eventually. Like it's not like I'm not going to buy a computer game at some point. I was about to it's say just, like you'll probably find some good stuff soon. Actually, I found something really good and I gifted it to you. Oh, I think I did notice Steam gave me some kind of notification. Let me take a look here. Yeah. The Isle Dragon Roars. Oh, is this that card game we were talking about a while ago? Yeah, the card game RPG from Square that yeah. from Square Enix, uh, that that you sounded that you were like overly interested in. Yeah, I did want to play this really badly. Hey, guess what? You've got it now. Hey, thank you. You're so sweet. I am such a good guy. You are. Thank you so much. I appreciate or, that. Or that, or uh, just a piece of garbage. No, <laughs> I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, <laughs> Thank so, you. Now, so, so, you know, I'll, I'll figure out what to do. Uh, so one thing I wanted to bring up because like, first of all, that card game reminded me of it, but also on top of that, like we were talking about what would be a good use for, for the, the steam wallet. Um, when does triangle strategy come out? Oh, that's like middle of next year, man. Oh God, my heart! Like my like, oh, I'm I'm holding my breath, dude. I want to play that game so badly. I mean, you you've got Arbiter's Mark. Yeah, I also have Octopath Traveler. Oh, oh, you actually picked up the Octopath? Yeah, it um. Remember oh, a while it, ago, oh, Steam sale. Yeah, it, it, went, it, went, it went down to like twenty bucks. Yeah, I was like, oh, I can't pass it up now. Like that's the cheapest it's ever gonna get. <laughs> like, oh yeah, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I still haven't played it though, but I will. I will at some point. You think that would be a good game to play on stream? No. Octopath no. Traveler, really? Uh, no. Oh, all right, all right. RPGs are not something. RP, RP like like classic JRPGs like that. I just don't think stream very well. Mm, says the guy who who plays Kingdom Hearts on that's a, stream. That, that's, I, I'm telling you, Kingdom Hearts is an action <laughs> RPG. Is an action RPG with spectacle fighter uh, battle mechanics. All right, all right. That's a very that's a very active game, man. <laughs> Maybe what I'll do is if I do Octopath Traveler, I'll record videos of it and see what happens. I mean, that's probably for the best. Yeah. Like, I I definitely triangle strategy. You're not going to be able to stream. Oh, God, I'm so like, even so, like, as you know, like, I'm a I'm a tactics person. I am like so excited for triangle strategy. I like, oh, my. I mean, as you should be, because it's it's tactics with the Octopath Traveler like graphics engine. And the whole, all the, all the fat, all the stuff that they're doing where it's like all of your decisions matter. And I'm like, yes, please give me consequences. Punish me, senpai, punish me. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) I mean, everybody makes that claim. Oh, well, like one of my favorite. So I used to play Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. And one of my favorite things, like one of the things that I adored about Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced was the they had areas in the game where they were called the the lawless zones where laws did not exist and the whole thing was that yeah like you can break the law because there are no laws in the lawless zones but also if somebody dies in a lawless zone they're gone forever you never get to have them back ever again they're dead like they're dead dead yeah and nobody nobody nobody's going to retrieve yeah I loved that. Like I, I loved that. Like that, you would have to like do missions in the lawless zones, and the stakes were high. Like you could be using your best characters, and if some freak accident occurs and your best character dies, you're screwed. He's gone for well, other than the main character, but, um, but like ignoring the 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 the, the like two or three main characters that you know could never die, um if you were building like any of your other characters up and they were like crazy, stupid, powerful and some crazy wild incident occurs where like they died, they were gone for good. Like you better have something to resurrect them on the spot or otherwise they're done for. And I, that was like the first game that I ever played that had like stuff like that, where they would punish you with major consequences for things like that. And I loved it because it makes it feel like it makes the battles feel more intense. Like you're like, okay, there's stuff on the line. 
you know, and I love that feeling. It makes you feel like that, you know, you have to be the best that you can be or work extra hard or whatever. And I, I love that. So the idea that triangle strategy is going to be having like, you know, decisions to be made, consequences to be had. Like, I'm I'm very excited for that. Like, like I said, punish me, senpai, please punish me, Square Enix senpai. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you got a you got a bunch of uh steam credit do you have any other games that are kind of like on your mind for it other than the grand theft auto stuff which you can't get i might just uh re-download um because one of the games that i played that i really like that i don't have now is uh Watch Dogs 2 or yeah Watch Dogs 2 Mm. or uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate. Okay. Um, I've never played any of the Watch Dogs games, and the only Assassin's Creed game I've ever played was I played a little bit of Black Flag. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, so that's the first thing that's got me salty. I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> What what's okay? So then let's what, what's the next thing? What's the next thing that's got you pouring salt everywhere? So uh, this weekend I was watching football games because I like the I like the sports ball. Sure, sure. And I saw some advertisements from Hulu about the show. Okay, okay. It I looked, think I know where the, this is going. It looked kind of funny. Okay. Well, it, it looked it looked kind of interesting. And the the trailer and everything uh, <laughs> had a lot of innuendo about it. Right. This is this is about the tweet you sent me. Yeah, this is about the tweet I sent you. Right. Um, right. We're going we're going into that one, buddy. That's OK. Bring it on. Bring it on. Buckle up. <laughs> um, the name of the show is Pen 15. Well, clearly they they had to take the name after our genius Pen Fifteen Club episode. So yeah, yeah, no, our, we our get masterpiece. Our, our, you know, yeah, we're just gonna, they're just they're just gonna steal <laughs> from uh, far more uh, talented people, funny and talented people than mm-hmm. they could ever imagine being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, nothing will top the the uh, the Pen Fifteen Club episode that we did. <laughs> no, that that was the we peaked right there. We probably should have. <laughs> yeah, we, we should we should end the podcast after that episode. We should have called it. We keep <laughs> we keep threatening the bum episode, but we'll do it. We'll get there. We'll, hey, we'll, we did we'll a booby get... episode. The booby yeah. episode was okay. We did a booby episode. Yeah, it was all about it was the Lulu gravity equation. <laughs> Remember the Lulu? Oh, that, was, that was that was officially the booby episode. That was a booby episode. <laughs> oh, gross. That was oh. Well, 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 that was part of booby month. <laughs> I think it was a booby month. It was a booby month. Most of it was just due to to your uh, your fascination with uh, Skyrim mods. Oh, you're right. We did the the Sky Boobies episode. You're totally right. How did I forget the Sky Boobies episode? That was a good one. Oh yeah, man. Sky Boobies well, was well, great. You've you've there were there was there was a while where you got incredible like kind of cringy type thirsty. Hey over, man, <laughs> over Sky Boobies digital, over digital boobs. <laughs> But hey anyway, man, so listen, no, there's listen, a show. It's called somewhere. It's, okay, it's it's called Pen Fifteen. Okay, and the there was a lot of innuendo. Sure. In the uh, in in the the trailer, like the trailers have a little bit of innu- innuendo. Um, and I was like, oh my god, is this going to be like uh, a, like a, a show about like two? Oh, let's just call it out there. Ugly bitches. <laughs> some some butter. Some two, two. some 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 ladies of the butter face. Yeah, some some buttery ladies. Some some buttery ladies. Mm. Like like <laughs> trying to navigate uh uh hookup culture. Okay. 
Because, you know, ladies... Could be an interesting we premise. Know, ladies, we know that you like the the dick. Wait, uh, you mean... Is, you lady, mean, they, she, they want it just as much as we want. Are you the, implying the that women actually get horny? Wait a minute. I... No. I don't have any evidence to this. <laughs> I mean, Dude, human, human biology's got to work the same way, right? Listen, listen, like she's there gotta, are she's gotta things. Feel, she's got to feel as, as compelled to procreate as we feel compelled to procreate. Listen, there are two important facts in life about women that must be understood at all times. Number one, women don't get horny. And two, women don't poop. Okay? Clearly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to wrap my head. I had to wrap my head around that one. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I was looking through, uh, you know, some. You know, I was like looking at the at the trailers and stuff, and just kind of like uh, some other things. And right. I'm like, I was like, oh my god, is that what this show is? Because the, I mean, these ladies are not attractive at all. Sure. But there, there, there's a good premise there to where, you know, I could see a lot of comedy being in there. So I have Hulu. Okay. I'm like, hey, I have a little Hulu subscription. It was part of my Disney Plus bundle. Oh, that's right. Disney owns Hulu now, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Disney owns Hulu. And if you, you can... There's a bundle that where you get Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus for a reasonable price, and not sponsored by Disney Plus. And I have a kid, <laughs> and I'm actually sharing my subscriptions with my girlfriend at this point. Okay, um, we're Facebook official. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that I, I didn't realize that. Uh, see, it's all fun and games until you start sharing Disney Plus subscriptions. Then that's when oh, no, the no, real no, business no, no, comes no. in. We're sharing. We're sharing Disney Plus. We're sharing Hulu. We're sharing Netflix. Oh, man, this guy's getting crazy over here. She's damn. She is. She and her and her I, daughter. I mean, at this point, you might as well be married. Are on my Nintendo Switch uh, online account. Jeez. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, it's pretty official over there. It sounds it's, like it's it's hardcore. Oh um, yeah, I don't know if you but can anyway, get any deeper than that. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, did you really just have to remind everybody that I have a small cock? <laughs> what? You what? said you said I don't think you can get any deeper than that. You're like, no, I can't even come close, man. <laughs> I, I guess think- maybe at the end of that, I should have put uh, that's what she said, huh? Well, sure. <laughs> I mean, I've nicknamed I've nicknamed my little feller Justin. Oh, I get it. I get it. Ah, there you go. Yeah, you got it. You got it. it. You got faster than she did. <laughs> I'm old. It doesn't work so well anymore. <laughs> but anyway, uh, oh, so God. so I have a Hulu subscription. So <laughs> right, like, that's the point we're trying to make here. <laughs> Yeah, let's 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 get let's reel it right back in. <laughs> cuz 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 I've got some juicy rants you want to hear. Sure, bring it. So, I watch so I'm like I'm going to fire up Hulu and I'm going to watch this. It's going to be on the background while I'm working. And I'm like I'm watching it and I'm like I was like uh Okay, there's the girls. They're they're not they're not attractive at all. Okay. Oh dear God, they're middle school students. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. <laughs> this isn't the show you think it's gonna be. Uh, and I'm like, and then I give it and underage give girls, it, and they're not even animated. For shame, lettuce. For shame. Yeah, no. <laughs> so so like I'm like okay. Uh. Maybe this is kind of just like a flashback thing. No, no, no. It's it's um, it's a show, unironically, about two tweens coping through you know the typical things that 
you know, 12, 13 year old girls go through in middle school. Okay. It's super cringe. And it's funny in the way that modern uh, writers would find things funny. Okay, so in other words, they're detached from the rest of society and they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, got it. Like, like it's it's the kind of funny where... Well, it's not actually funny? It's not, it's not funny. <laughs> um, and it's kind of just cringy and sad. Okay. So basically it, every every sitcom that exists on mainstream television nowadays. Yeah, basically. Basically. Okay. All right. Just making sure I understand where we Why would they call it Pen 15 and make it about middle school children? Why would they do that? I haven't gotten to this, but a lot of the like like I was like so I followed the hashtag along on Twitter. Apparently there's some rainbow gel pens that are kind of pivotal to the story. Do they not know like what pen 15 is like, they're like, I, Oh, well clearly it's about like, that would be a gel pen thing. Right? Like that's clearly a no, brand. No, no. Of pen. I think, I think, I think, I think the marketing campaign for this was either incredibly brilliant or incredibly shitty. I just like, Like, like it makes me wonder if they actually don't know what that is. Like they don't like they do. They do. I always have to assure you, you do because if you watch the trailers, the innuendos just come at you hard and fast. Uh, but it's about it's about like thirteen and fourteen year old kids. Yeah, they never don't mention that in the trailers, now do they? But like, it's. Uh... Man, that's not okay. Like, that's not okay, man. I mean, it's it's okay if the if the thirteen and if the twelve and thirteen year old girls don't do anything. Well, but like the the but I, like I, then don't call it pen fifteen. Like, just don't. I mean, call it pen fifteen. <laughs> um, and and laden your your advertisement campaign. With some very subtle innuendos, man, and and then watch as like everybody, like half of the people who, who like you know the the half of the people who are like, you know, I'm here for the penis, <laughs> right? Like that's then, my thought and too. Then, and then you know they get there, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, oh, you got me. This is like like the people who who like. Like, like, put, like, do the long con for the brick roll. Like, <laughs> long con for the brick. You know what would be great? Have you ever Have you ever gotten fished in by a troll? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it took yeah. thirty minutes. For, and it took them thirty minutes to rick roll you. Do, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like what I think the show is. Oh, you know what would be great. Is if like the final episode, like they were like leading up through the entire show to like have like, you know, this epic conclusion and it's really dramatic and you're like, oh, I want to know like what's going to happen. And then like the final episode is just like 30 minutes of Rick Astley never going to give you up. <laughs> it's just like the world's greatest Rick roll just like as the final episode of the season. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sticking around to find out. <laughs> I've already given this show one hour of my time. Oh, you poor thing. I watched two episodes. You poor thing. That's I watched two too, episodes. That's and two I was episodes like, too many. I, I watched two episodes and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And then I got really mad. <laughs> Clearly, you've been like, you've been really like and talking got, about this for. I got. I got salty about that shit because it's because they Rick rolled you. That's why. No, no, no. It's not because they Rick rolled me. It's well, it's a little bit because they Rick rolled. Yeah, me. they did. It was because they took our brilliant comedy. Yeah, which clearly we invented and took it to a lame and stupid place. <laughs> 
Like, if you're gonna steal my ideas, mother... Bruh. Please, steal the idea. Yeah. Do it some like, justice, like, please. 100% steal it. Just put your... Just, just scratch out my name and put your name <laughs> on it. Don't take half of my idea, append some gay shit at the end of it. Yeah. And then sell it off as your own. Don't take something genius and then turn it into a Netflix adaptation, okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't. <laughs> Dear God, don't. Because I, I, I'm not going to be mad because I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get like ever get around to to writing a TV series. <laughs> like, if I have a good idea for a TV series, it's because it's a TV series I want to see. Yeah. So if you're going to go through the trouble of making it. And then let me consume it. I'm not going to be mad. <laughs> well, I I'm mean, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be mad because you took all the risk, <laughs> and I get and I get the haws. But <laughs> but then you take you think you make me think you take my idea. You very obviously did. <laughs> and then what you give me is the exact opposite of what I wanted to see. Yeah. I don't want to watch anything called Pen 15 and have it be about 13, 14 year old girls. Okay. Yeah. It's that's like, just, that's like, that's it's like danger. Will Robinson. Like, it's like, it's like you convince me to walk onto a, sh- like walk into a theater because you tell me a show is called the vagina monologues. And I sit there for like two hours and not once does a vagina talk to me. Mm. Indeed. It's like, it's like, come on, man, what you doing? <laughs> if you're gonna tell me if you're gonna tell me there's some talking fannies by god i want to see a talking fanny mm. i'd i'd be down to see some talking asses that'd be kind of cool oh fanny uh the front bottom right i forget that it means different things in different places <laughs> yeah front bottom. <laughs> oh man yeah i <sighs> I mean, I mean, some American chicks, it looks like, you know, I, I <laughs> OK, man, you right. You right. <laughs> oh, come on. You've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you, yeah, you've yes. Seen, you've seen some front butt. Oh, man. A shiver just went down my back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's like a. I We're feel gonna, gross now. I'm going to spend the next five minutes body shaming chicks. The front butt, the front butt, and the back boobs. Oh man, that are bigger than the front ones. Oh god. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, no. no so that just because, like, seriously, like I've I already laid out the premise. Like, like the show stars two thirty-two-year-old ladies pretending who, to be fourteen. No, twelve, thirteen. They're in middle school. They're like eighth graders. They're 12, 13. Uh, and how does that even work? Like, I get how it works in like shows like 90210, where well, it's like, it oh, yeah, like they're 16 or 17, but they're played by like 23, 25 year olds, you know? Yeah, no, that works. Like, again, the premise was, you know, these women are reliving. You know, the horrors of being a preteen girl. Is it like a flashback thing? Like, like they're they're flashing back to when like they start out as older women and then they flash back to being no. children and then the whole show just takes place with them being children. No, yeah, they don't ever establish the fa- flashback. So we're just expected to believe that they're like 12 or 13 years old, but they look like they're 30. Well, no, they say they're 12, 13 years old, but everybody looks like they're, but everybody's adults. Like, like it would be, it would be remarkably funny if the show was like these two 32 year old women and then a bunch of actual 12 year old girls. <laughs> girls and I'd boys. Want, you know what? That might be actually kind of entertaining. I'll admit that. Like, it's just like, like they're, like, what if it was like, um, oh God, like, Oh my god, like what if there was like a, a thing where they like you know, like basically like they were transformed into 12 or 13 year old girls and they had to go back to middle school 
And like the idea is that like there are moments where we see them as children among children, but in their brains, they're still like 30 or 40 year old women. So like whenever they're just dealing with each other, they just look like two like gigantic 30 or 40 year old women walking among like 12 or 13 year old children like doing their thing. But every once in a while, they bring you back into reality to remind you they're they're in the bodies of like 12 or 13 year old kids. There is a show. There you go. There's a free yeah, one, that's, guys. That's not, that's not the show that they gave us. Though. Well, Hulu, take my idea. There you go. You can have that show for free. That one's on me. Because <laughs> that would be funny. Well, I mean, they're discontinuing this show. Good. <laughs> Apparently, you know, they didn't start. They didn't start advertising it until they canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what you get for calling something like that Pen15. They deserve yeah, it. Yeah, no. This was... Uh, it could have been so great. And, yeah. and like, why are people stupid? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ask that question every single day, Lettuce. Every single day. <laughs> it's, uh, what's the, uh... Um, the Will Ferrell in um, uh, what is it? Um, oh, gee whiz, I suddenly forgot the name. The one about the fashion model. Um, do you know which one I'm talking about? Where they're all fashion models and um, like blue blue steel. Um, God, I can't think of the name of it all of a sudden. But oh, that guy, that, that, that I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I just can't oh, think man. of the name. But uh, there's the scene where Will Ferrell's like super pissed off. And he's like, I, why do I feel like I'm taking crazy pills? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God, that's a good movie. I have not seen that one in a long time. I just I can't think of the name of it all of a sudden. And I saw the sequel, too, and the sequel wasn't very good. But the original is like the best. Like I got, I got the black lung, Daddy. <laughs> oh, apparently I didn't see it, but there is like they are with like younger looking actors, maybe even children. Oh, because you know I was looking back into this. It's like that can't be right. Like there's no way that 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 they just cast an entire middle school full of thirty year olds. <laughs> no, there there are some kids there. So so. Now you've got 32 year old girls trying to kiss on 12 year old boys. So unless they went the direction that I mentioned, which is like they, you know, like the idea of like being older women trapped in the bodies of like young kids, unless they actually went that direction, how would that work for the show that they're making? Like, like having like a cast of like, you know, young children and then two 30 year old women, you know? Like, don't actually do anything with the kids. I, I like. I don't know, but like, because I thought the idea that I gave was pretty clever. Like, you know, like the idea that they're like trapped in in younger bodies, but they're actually no, no, older no. women. No, 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 no. It's it's old bodies reliving the the tortures of being younger. So, is it a flashback? Or is it like Freaky Friday? Is it like a Freaky Friday thing where I they're mean, like body it's, swapping? It's an un- it's 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 a unestablished flashback. Uh, okay, I, I how I met your mother kind of style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, okay. Like like it's like they never like not even like how you met how I, how I met your mother because that still has like the established like every beginning of the episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like, like, no, it's just like, it, apparently it was, the show is made by the Lonely Island guys. No, shut up. No. No, I used to actually like them. Don't say that. Yeah, it's new show from the Lonely Island. Oh, no. So this is an Andy Sandberg joint. Oh, all right. All right, man. My oh my, have the might how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Ugh. 
Jeez. Yeah. So, so that was kind of just like, and, and, and now that I know it was made by the Lonely Island guys, Pen Fifteen uh, has to be intentional. <laughs> then, if it was made by them, like they know exactly what they're doing. If they called it Pen Fifteen, and they're the like, if they, if it was just some random like out of touch Hollywood producer. Then I'd be like, okay, well, maybe there's a possibility they have no idea what Pen 15 is actually supposed to be. If it's made by the freaking Lonely Island crew, they know exactly what they were doing when they called it Pen 15. Uh, it depends on it depends on how how involved Andy Samberg is. Man. Now now you're making me angry. Because <laughs> like, if it was just Dorma and Akiva. <laughs> like well, you're, like, like, like this kind of sounds like now that I know that Jorma was involved, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. This is totally a Jorma thing. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it also like the, the whole Rick being Rickrolled. Yeah, which would be makes, great. This, this, it makes it makes sense now that 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 this is a Jorma thing. <laughs> it's, that's the kind of crap Jorma would do in a, a half hour long Rickroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like the, the the half hour long rip roll. <laughs> God, I wish I could put a rip roll in here without getting you know copyright struck. <laughs> <clears throat> really? Do you think? Oh no, no, it's that's BG on the course. They're gonna. I've been struck by a rip roll before. It's happened to me. Oh, nice. Yeah, I had. Um... I, I don't remember. I, it wasn't crash test. It was somebody. Maybe it was crash test. Um, somebody. It was. I was playing a horror game, and they were. I think it was. We were playing Phasmophobia, and and I. I think it was crash test. He was sending like scary messages, uh, to pretend to be ghosts and stuff like that. And uh, he had me open one up on a Phasmophobia stream, and uh, he rickrolled me. And I got copyright struck for that. So I had to like cut out all of the music. <laughs> so I had to cut it from the from the phasmophobia stream. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get you can uh, you can get struck for Rick Rolls for sure. For sure. Oh, Lonely Island are just uh, EPs on this. Mm. Oh, so. Like, like they, they don't hate they're just EPs. They're not even producers. Okay, so then they're, it's not their fault then. Okay. Well, I mean, they had a hand in it, so they were yeah, part but of producers are the ones that always make the final decisions usually, which is well, EPs what... EPs are the ones producing, like are the idea guys, yeah, who and also are the uh, money people. Mm. Oh, EP but is I an don't... executive producer. Yeah. Executive oh, producer. All right. Well, I guess it is their fault then. <laughs> yeah, executive producer. Well, I mean, they, they they probably had a had like an overarching idea. Yeah. But they it doesn't look like they did a lot of the writing. Okay. Good. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, it's irrelevant. I mean, you know, they were funny in the early two thousands. <laughs> oh man. Oh well. Man, you know what that also made me think of is, did you ever used to watch the uh, the whitest kids you know? Did you ever used to I, watch? I used to, I used to love the whitest kids you know. Me too. Um, one of the main creators uh, died not all that long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, it's really the, sad. The, the, actually, the good one. I thought like almost all of them were funny. I definitely oh, thought no, no, he no, was no. the funniest. I would agree yeah, with you yeah, that yeah. He, he was the funniest. Yeah, but... the best. One. I should have said the best one instead of the good yeah. one. I also like the guy who was like the the short chubby guy, um, because he, he did the the baked beans. Did you ever see that one? <laughs> baked beans. Yeah. Go ahead and call me. I won't bite much. Yeah, you're talking. You're talking about Timmy Williams. Yeah, yeah, Timmy Williams. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was Trevor Moore who died. Yeah. Oh, he was so Trevor. Trevor, Trevor was good. Trevor was amazing. My one of my there were so many good skits that they did. Like I, one of my favorites was always the gallon of PCP. <laughs> uh, oh, mine it's is in liquid form now, huh? 
Oh, I, I have to go now. I got to go pick up my kids. Oh, you you left them with the dealer too. No, no, no. They're at soccer practice. I'm just, I'm going to get in the minivan and go pick them up. Oh. <laughs> what happened yeah. to your girlfriend? Oh, she's dead. Oh, my favorite. Uh, my favorite oh, skit. My favorite skit is is uh, ass pennies. Oh yeah, that's a great one. Or the uh, and I gotta say this clearly. <laughs> I gotta say one of my favorite skits of all time that used to make the me grapist. cry. What? The grapist? No, not the grapist. But that's a good one too. Uh, I'm gonna grape you in the mouth. <laughs> um, no, the the now let me. I gotta put proper spaces between this so it doesn't get misunderstood the the finger ring friends skit do you remember that one yeah yeah the finger ring friends (laughs) (laughs) you can even do it in the back of your mom's van (laughs) oh my god oh god Dude, the wise kids you know were so good. They were so oh, yeah, like, there's they're so funny. They're so funny. Reminiscing about really good comedy back in the early 2000s, back when you were still allowed to Back dream. when you were back when you can be funny. Yeah, that's literally what I was about to say. Back when, you know, comedy was still legitimately incredibly hilariously funny and you didn't have to worry about, yeah. you know, getting canceled over a joke. Back when back when comedy didn't didn't mean some 30 year old Asian chick dry humping a teddy bear. I mean, I is she good looking? I'm, I I would maybe I've, watch I've that. already just des- I've already described both of these girls. OK, never mind. Right, because you were talking right. You're talking about the Hulu show. OK, never yeah, mind. yeah. That was, the, the, that was something that I, I saw on the um uh, that was something that I saw on one of the trailers. Mm. I'm going to have to rewatch that trailer with the sound on so that I can f- like now that you've like talked this up, like in, in, a, in a way of which I, I will not be viewing the show. But I, I actually I at oh, least yeah. have don't to go waste, and watch don't, that. Don't don't waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Here, I'll even I'll even help you out and. You're gonna send uh, me a link. You I'll would. send you the link to the good to the good trailer. You would, you would. Well, the one that has like all the stuff that I was like, hey, this was this might be what the show is. Right. Nope. No such luck. You get nothing. You'll get nothing. But yeah. So I've been I've been an angry little man. Bruh. I I can tell. I can tell. And, is there in, anything- my, oh. in my hilarious little way. Anything else you wanted to be salty about, or did you get it all off your chest, big boy? No, that was it. Just not playing Grand Theft Auto in my entitled little way. <laughs> and uh, and seeing a sh- TV show that 100% should have um, been something completely different. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty disappointing that they called it Pen15. That's not, that's not appropriate. <laughs> About a rainbow gel pen, like give me a break. <laughs> we should, you know what? We should, uh, we should make our own Pen Fifteen movie. That's what we should do. In fact, actually, you know what? Uh, were we? Wait a minute! Didn't we? We did a we did an episode where we would be where we were talking about the Imaginary Boys movie and like who would play us as as uh, characters, right? Yeah, no, that was that was one of the things we did with Cindy. Yeah, I remember that. Oh man. That would be our pen 15. It, it, it should be called the imaginary boys, the movie, um, uh, chamber of the pen 15 club <laughs> or something like that. Or, or, uh, order or, you know, like how they have order the Phoenix order of the pen 15. Perfect. Yeah. It's genius. <laughs> All right, now all we need to do is somebody who can who who is dumb enough, I mean incredibly intelligent enough to uh invest in our movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we could get Harvey Weinstein on board. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we probably could. <laughs> He'll finance anything. Oh my goodness gracious. He's well- a creepy old dude. <laughs> Well, um, 
I'm thinking about I'm thinking about maybe we should uh, we should wrap this one up. How do you feel about it? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm tapped out. Yeah, me too. Else. Me too. I'm a little. I, I I didn't exactly have a whole bunch of things to talk about other than uh, uh, the games that I mentioned and and the entertaining salt that you had to pour out. So, if you get a chance, you know, get to playing um, the game and let me know what you think. The card game? Yeah, I will, yeah. I will check it out. I, I mean, I played the demo. Yeah. It wasn't an. <sighs> There was a lot of stuff that I was just like, the like I get the card aesthetic, uh-huh. and it, it, it is beautifully done, but it also there's a lot of gameplay things mm-hmm. that the tying yourself into that 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 kind of card aesthetic, right, right, kind of forces you into that feels like it kind of chops things up a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay. I will, I will definitely, I will definitely check it out and give you an opinion. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a review on it or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like playing, it's like playing a tabletop RPG. I mean, I'm kind of down for that. That's kind of like what inscription is all about. So kind of down for that. All right, man. Well, um, this was this was a ton of fun. Do you like other than mentioning the games? Do you have any other last minute thoughts or you, you feeling comfy, feeling good? No, no, I'm I'm feeling awesome, man. <laughs> OK, I think I, I think this was a a fun and informative show. Yeah, it is. It was. We did it. We did the thing. So we got I'm, there. We got there. Yay. I. <laughs> Yeah, I've just I've just been thinking about games a lot lately and like especially because like I mentioned before when, you know, I was kind of rethinking about your opinions on Minecraft and I kind of wanted to further discuss it with you a little bit more just to get some more clarification. I don't know. Yeah, I also was wondering if maybe like uh, you should look into playing like multiplayer games. Maybe you'd find it more fun if you were playing with other people as well, but possibly possibly. Yeah. Okay, I mean, mean, I did I did the the world with with uh, with uh, perp. Yeah, yeah. The world with Mike. Um, Yeah, that's right. And you you played it for like an hour or two and then you were like, I'm done. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, let's baby bounce. Yeah. (laughs) Later, nerds. (laughs) That's all good, man. I mean, I had my own personal problems with that server, too. But later, nerds, I've got females to breath. Yeah, no, nah, I well, I'm going to be playing over here with my blocks, you know, like no girls allowed, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm going to I'm going to wrap this up. So first of all, thank you guys all so much for listening in and, and hanging out with the imaginary boys. And um, if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, hit that like button, because apparently the like button matters and the dislike button doesn't mean anything anymore. So don't even bother thinking about it. Just go ahead and smash the like button. Um, leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Uh, do you think that uh, Mr. Lettuce's salt is well deserved? Do you think that uh, Pen15 should actually be about middle school? kids i don't think it should but i mean your opinion i'd like to hear it down in the comments below um maybe your experiences in minecraft or other games would be nice tell me about inscription i'm so obsessed with it you got to go in the comments below and tell me what you think of inscription if you've been playing it or watching it or whatever so and uh if you're not already subscribed please hit the subscribe button greatly appreciate it hit that notification bell while you're down there doing that and check in the description below for all the wonderful links such as paypal and streamlabs all donations are super greatly appreciated. They go directly towards helping out the channel. I'm actually planning to use some of the money that I've made to actually improve some equipment very soon. So thank you so much for that. And a wonderful shout out to the Patreon members, which include Bo Falcon, Fajuk Enterprises, James P, Miss Rebecca, as well as Scorpio guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your regular donations. You're greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, I, I guess uh, other than that, um, We have been the Imaginary Boys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage.